Hey guys, welcome to Skylanders Ring of Heroes and this video is going to be my beginner's guide to the game. It's going to be a fairly long video I think. I'm going to try and cover all the basics of the game and then sort of transition to my sort of opinion on the fastest way to progress for those people that want to sort of streamline their progress. Um, I'll leave sort of uh, timestamps in the description of different sort of stages of the video if you want to skip the browse at that and skip through to certain things. Um, but to get started, I think we'll, first we'll start talking about the summoning because the summoning is a fragment system which is different to other systems. So we'll just do a summon here to show you, not like other games, if, I know a lot of people probably coming from Summoner's War where you summon, you get a full unit. In this game, you summon, you get fragments, you have chances to get extra fragments like that one just did then. Um, and then once you have enough pieces, you can summon them. So you can see I've got enough pieces to summon this Gorilla Driller. Now I can click summon and he will be summoned. Then he'll be available in my monster list to use. Um, I'll jump over across to the monster list now and actually have a check out of that. So as you can see here, these ones with the red dots in gray, they're ones that I have enough shards to summon. And these are the ones that I, I have already summoned and I'm working on. And then the ones down the end in the gray without the red dot, you can see the blue sort of experience bar that tells you how many soul stones I have of that unit and how many I need to be able to summon it. Once you do summon the, the character though, that, that experience bar does turn into a genuine experience bar. It just shows your experience um, and how far you need to go to get a level. For experience, there's two ways to get experience. And the first one is gonna be these potions. For me, the potions are a bit expensive to use. Um, hopefully they do make them a bit cheaper later on, but for me, I just save the potions. They used to be good to sell, but they nerfed how much they sell for. So at the moment, I don't really use them. I just find that you can gain the experience that the potion gives you and get the gold um, from just farming a scenario as opposed to using the potion. The gold cost is just a bit too much for my liking. So, that's the potions. Unfortunately, they are what they are at the moment. Like I said, hopefully they get a bit cheaper, but the other way is through the scenarios. So the scenarios are fairly basic. Uh, like a lot of games, you just go in there, you can take two units you're leveling with a unit max level to get the experience, or here I have my Stormblade and Stealth Elf, which are my main units, but they're still leveling anyway. You also have uh, two spectator slots, which are units that gain a lower amount of experience than the the ones in the main team. You also have this villain slot. I'll talk about a bit, bit about villains in a second, but you can put a villain in there. Unfortunately, the villains do not get experience from battle. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Another important thing to mention is the auto system and the 10 times auto system more importantly. So the game does have a 10 times auto feature where you can get it, you can set it and it will run this scenario or the dungeon or whatever you're doing. It'll run it 10 times and then just give you all the rewards at the end. Um, to be able to do the 10 times auto though, the other thing is it does do it at an extra fast speed, which is amazing. Um, to get the 10 times auto feature though, you have to three star the stage. So as you can see this stage six, I've three started so I can 10 times auto. But um, if you're wondering what requirements they are, if you look on the left hand side here, basically in anything you're looking at doing, there'll be something somewhere that has like a little star, like on the left hand side here, this thing has the star and it'll tell you how to get um, your three stars. The first one is to clear the stage. Second one is to have all Skylanders survive. And the third star is a clear time. Now clear times change depending on the content. If it's easy scenarios, you have five minutes. Normal scenarios, you have four minutes. Hard ones, you have three minutes. And dungeons are three minutes as well. So that is very important um, to try and actually get your three stars, especially for farming like experience and runes and stuff like that. Um, to get it done a lot quicker. And I'm a massive fan of the 10 times auto feature. It's probably my favorite feature in any game I've played. It just means instead of looking at your phone every two minutes to restart a run, you can look at it every 20 minutes. Like I love the, I love the grind of games and I love all that, but this is just an amazing quality of life feature. Once you have unlocked that auto feature, you'll be able to click this button in the, just next to the start button, the auto battle options. And then you can set some settings. So like play 10 auto battles, battle stop and following. 
um, blah, blah, blah. It goes through all this stuff. You can check different um, conditions. I leave mine on continue battles when defeated. If there's a stage where I know, you know, I've got about a 90, 90% success rate, I don't care if I lose one and then just keep rolling through. So you can play with those settings however you like, but that's the basic gist of that. And um, yeah, so now we'll just jump into a run and talk a little bit about the combat and then go to the experience at the end of it. The combat, you basically have a mana bar down the bottom. It fills up. All your Skylanders have skills with that cost a certain amount of mana and they have cooldowns. So if the cooldown's available and the mana is available, you can click that skill and it'll go into that queue on the left. That was really quick clear because as you can see, it's an early stage where Stormblade sort of brushed through it. Now we get the experience. You can see that my two main units got 129 experience and the two spectators got the less amount of experience. Um, the thing with the experience is that unlike other games where if you have one unit that you bring and they gain, some games give you the whole experience of the whole team. In this one, even if you only have one unit, if that one unit was getting 129 experience when there's three units, that one unit is still only going to get 129 experience if he's the only unit. So there's not really an advantage to bringing only one unit with your team you're better off bringing an extra unit that's going to speed up runs or something like that. Um, onto villains. Now, those every scenario can drop blue potions. The red potions are for Skylanders. The blue potions are for villains. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see that little skull above my stink bomb portrait. You click on that, it changes it to villains. You can have a look at your villains. And basically, the only way to level up villains is with potions. It is, once again, very expensive, but it's the only way you can do it. So that's how you sort of have to have to level up your villains. For early game progression, Broccoli Guy seems to be the way to go. Not many people have exper experimented with too many other things, but the way healing works in the game and the mana system, the fact that your, um, your villain skills don't cost mana. So villains are on about a 30 second cooldown. You summon them, they last for... A different amount of turns this second ability is basically a suicide button for them um, after they use two abilities for the broccoli guy here um, he'll basically just die and then you'll have to resummon him in 30 seconds but their abilities don't cost mana and broccoli guy has a heal which is really nice because a lot of healers have expensive heals in this game and early game you do, your other units like you know if you're using the stealth elf or the tough luck which i'll talk about a bit later um, they have really high mana cost, so you don't really have room for a healer, which lets this guy, he doesn't heal for a massive amount, but um, he is a good heal. I'll talk quickly about skill ups. Um, skill ups, you do get uh, these green stones from different sources, from daily logins, from completing some missions, and through Mirage Tower. You don't get many of them, so use them wisely. On my main account, I skilled up this broccoli guy um, until he gave a HP regen with his heal. Um, and that's the only thing I've really skilled up in on that account. Like I said, they're very rare, but the broccoli guy seems to be an amazing support for your team when you're normally using attackers. So he is the one I would recommend to go with early game for leveling up, powering up and evolving and putting a few skill ups even into. Even if you only go two skill ups to get his defense up, it really helps. Um, so that's pretty much it for the villains. So we'll jump back to the Skylanders now. So with skill ups, it's the same for Skylanders and for villains, the same resource, all that sort of stuff. Um, the interesting thing about this game that I really like, like I said, I do prefer using those early skill ups on Broccoli Guy. The stones are fairly scarce at this stage in the game. But the thing that I really like is the fact that the ability you have selected is the ability that will get the skill up. So you can target whichever ability you want to skill up, and that's the one that will get the skill up. So, um, for instance, if I wanted to skill up the skill one of my blades, I just literally hit that power up, and it would upgrade that skill. There's no randomness to it. If I wanted to upgrade his second skill, I click on it, then click upgrade. If I want to upgrade his passives, passives in this game also get... Um, upgrades and I can just click that and it will do it so the other thing about the skill ups is as you can see they give different things um, you can see that some skill ups give attack some give cooldown reduction some give uh, mana cost reduction you even get added effects like sometimes uh, I think one of the villains has an attack buff and when you skill it up it also adds a crit buff to it 
And there's a bunch of different things that you can get from skill up. So just read through the skills on the units that you're thinking about skilling up. Now, the shards you can get through different ways. You can get them through summoning, obviously. The scenario maps do drop shards for certain Skylanders. And then there is also Omni Gems. So Omni Gems are a currency that you can get. You can get them from Arena. You get them from Mirage Tower, which is sort of like one of those um, multi-stage tower modes. All those sorts of things. Here you can see that, and they have different rarities lining with the natural star level of the Skylander. So natural one star is gray, natural two star is green, and so on and so forth. You also have specific ones for the type of role the unit is um, to spread out even more. But simply, you can use these Omni Gems and you can just hit the max, choose how many you want, and you'll get more um, Soul Stones. And the reason you, you'll want more soul stones on those Omni Gems first though, you can only use them on units that you have summoned. So if you've got say six out of 50 of a Skylander and you need the 50, you're not gonna be able to use it to get the summon. You can only use them once you have them. Um, but yeah, with those uh, Omni Gems, they're very sort of scarce. So I wouldn't be using them too quickly um, just because you, you really want to decide what units you want to use it on before using them. The one star and two star ones, not too important, um, but three, four, and five star, you really want to think about what unit you're going to use them on. The reason you want so many uh, shards is because you're going to want those shards to power up. So the way the sort of evolution power up system works is each uh, star stage, so you can see this guy's a one star, I'll have to power him up five times and once he's at plus five, I'll be able to evolve him. And you can see all of this takes shards. Um, and then Awakening also takes 300 shards. So you can see that you're gonna need a lot of shards. The thing about this game compared to some other gacha games is that you, it, you the units are much easier to summon, but a lot harder to power up. So you, you'll find that you'll get a lot of nat fives. The game actually gives you a lot of free nat five summons, um, but that's not where it ends. Getting the unit isn't the end of it you've got to then keep getting those fragments to power them up. Um, I actually like the system. It's a very, it's, it seems like a more fair system that um, in a competitive game later on um, down the road, everyone will sort of have access to every unit to sort of um, build, but it'll be down to what ones you choose to use your resources on um, for what you have. So that's the um, that general system. As you can see here for my awakening, I also need these ores. Um, for powering up and uh, evolving and awakening, you're also gonna need ores and elixirs. So those are ores, those are element ores. Um, I'll see if I can find something that needs an elixir for the power up, here we go. So, and you can see here, we've got elixirs. Um, you can get those through the distorted dimensions, which is like your dungeon. You have uh, different elemental dungeons that swap on a daily basis and you can get your different element ores from there and then all of these will also drop the elixirs. So that's the basics behind the powering up system. That's the basic fundamentals of the game. You've got a quest system. Now, when you start the game, you're gonna be directed straight to the quest system. The basic idea, the basic way to guide you through the starting of the game is just follow the quest system. You'll start at part one and it'll take you through everything. It'll make you repeat a few things a few times just so you can get the hang of it. It'll tell you what stage of scenario it wants you to clear. Then it'll say, go to arena, um, go back to scenario. It'll just basically guide you through the game and give you a good understanding. It may seem a bit tedious to players that have already played these type of games, but it actually is a really good guide through and it does give you really good rewards. So it's definitely worth doing. Um, as for units in the game that you get, um, everyone will start off with Hot Dog and Blades. Now, I found through my first time playing the game, um, this is just an alt account that I made for demonstration, but all the one stars have some really good use. Um, there, there isn't too many real dead units, but the, the general progression, you get those two, you do a bit of a tutorial, then you will also unlock Stealth Elf. Now, the amazing thing about Stealth Elf is that she is a natural three star, and through that quest system, as we can see here, um, through part one, you end up with an extra 405 shards for Stealth Elf, which is very important because she's a natural three star, so she's a bit stronger and you can power her up um, to five star very early in the game. This is only my second day or third day on the, this account, and I've already got her at five star, which is 
which is very important for progress. Um, so those are the three you start off with. When you do finish the part one of the quest chain, you will unlock Enigma as well, and he's another awesome unit. So the basic team that I suggest running for beginner players, um, this is ignoring Nat 5s now. There is a way to reroll. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but the basic free-to-play team is going to be something like Stealth Elf, Enigma, and Hot Dog, and you can basically use Blades in the place, or you can basically use... Um, any other unit in the place of the Enigma before you get him. But I normally use Blades if you're doing a full free-to-play option. Um, and those guys can carry you through a lot of the content um, early game. So that's my basic suggestion for team. You just basically follow the quest chain and use those guys. Now, I said about re-rolling. Um, we have there in the summons, there is, we'll check here. You can read this. It says basically says you get rewards for the more you summon. Um, and after three summons, once this is only once per account, the rest of them reset. But once per account, when you do three summons, so three ultra premium summons, which are 800 gems, so you need 2,400 gems to do those three summons, you will get a free Nat 5 summon. Now, that cannot be light or dark units. Um, it can be any other element. So there is the option to reroll. I will make a reroll guide and maybe a video talking about the best units to reroll for. Um, if I, if you're watching this in the future and I have made that, I'll link it in the description. If not, just wait for it to come and it'll be out there. But um, yeah, so you can go for any Nat 5 that you want that isn't light or dark, which is really cool. I actually enjoy that sort of thing. I'll be rerolling for a specific unit on my... Um, my global server account and that will be the guy that i have on this one just because i really want to test him out and that is stormblade so that's that i'll get onto those guides later on as for general progression um like i said you're just following the quests but a, a couple key things that you want to look out for is arena you really want to do your arena gears as fast as you can you just go into jewels here into arena um and then you can just battle people you only get five gears that reach, recharge over the time, a fairly standard system, because I think you really wanna get into this shop and start getting some Omni Gems. For early game, you're not gonna be getting a heap of Omni Gems. Um, later on, you'll probably be able to get all buy all of these in a week. But for early game, this may be a bit controversial, but I actually like going for the, the green ones because a few of the early units you're gonna build are gonna be two-star units which means those green ones, they're really cheap, really efficient, and they're gonna give you a lot of bang for your buck early game. Um, say if you're only getting 600 arena points per week, I'd be taking those uh, premium Omni Gems over the legendary ones just for early game. Later on, I definitely think the legendaries are more important, but just for, to streamline that early progression, but do it however you like to do it. Um, it is obviously optimal late game to be having those legendaries, but that's just something I find that I've, I've been doing. Um, but yeah, so when we get into that, the reason I say do arena is if you go to missions, there are a lot of missions you can collect. Now, people in, in um, other sort of turn-based RPGs and stuff like that on mobile, you're inclined to wait before collecting these because um, when you level something like Summoner's War, it just brings you to your energy cap. In this game, you actually gain energy equal to your cap. So if I leveled now, I'd actually gain an extra 81 energy. So my math is off, but I'd be sitting at like 117 energy, I think it is, if I add that up right. So it's not the end of the world to collect your missions and level up. As long as you're going to burn through that energy in the day, you're not going to lose out too much. But the thing about doing the arena is you can see this quest that says win arena 40 times. Now it's just onto gold rewards, but for, I think it was winning arena 10 times and 20 times, you get little chests. Now those chests look like this. You can go over to your inventory and you go to general over the far right and you'll see these chests. So once you get them, they come to this inventory and basically the inventory is just all your general materials in the game. The only thing you have to worry about is this general tab where it's stuff that you can actually use. So as you can see, this chest says, um, three star premium crate for strike. So the arena rewards give you um, a crate for, I'm pretty sure it's energy and strike, um, which give you the different set bonuses of HP or attack. And then you just go exchange and you'll see that these give you a full set of three star runes. 
Um, that is awesome. So that's why I would definitely recommend doing that. I know it sounds low, only three star, but if you get those three stars in your first couple hours of play, then it's actually gonna really speed up the progression of how easy you can advance through those early stages. Also, if we go into the adventure mode, um, down the bottom left-hand side, you can see these, these gradual rewards. Basically, each stage you can get up to three stars. If you get uh, three stars in them, it gives you three points for this meter down the bottom. So if you three star every stage, you'll end up getting all the rewards, but you get the other rewards at 9, 15, and then obviously all of them at 21. And as you can see here on the Infernal Vol Volcano, this is not too hard to complete at all. You'll do this very early. If you get all the stars for it, um, you'll actually get another one of those three star strike crates which is once again, really good. And the big one is through the questing. Uh, I can't remember where it is, but somewhere through this part one quest, there will be another crate that you can get, which is right here at 78 as you're progressing through. And that is a four star crate. So it gives you a full set of four star ward runes, which increase defense, but early game, it's just about getting those stats. Now that we're talking about runes, I'll jump over to runes and talk about that quickly. You basically have your st standard six runes, um, slot one, three, and five. So slot one, it can only be attack as a main stat. Three can only be defense as a main stat. And six can only be HP as a main stat, all of them being flat. Now in Skylanders, flat stats are actually really viable. Um, it's not till you get decent units, six star, um, that you find start finding yourself really using percentage runes. I made a video about that as well. Sorry for keep linking videos, but I'll leave it in the description that talks about whether you wanna use percentage or flat runes. Basically early game, you always wanna use flat stats. So those three are always guaranteed to have your flat stat, but then you've got um, two, four, and six. Um, they have different uh, rune, uh, different uh, attributes that they can have. Um, basically, I think, uh, I'll, I'll, I might put a table up on the uh, on the screen, or there is another great web resource that you can go to, which is chompy.app, and it's in the link. I link it in all my videos. It's basically got all the information about the game. It's sort of like a wiki page for the game, so you can check that out too. But you can get different stats on these ones. You can start getting the percentages as well, um, but you really want to aim for flats in these. So basically with your attacking units, you want to go for attack and attack on these two, on slot two and six. And then on slot four, you cannot have attack, but you can have defense and HP. This is a defense percent, which is trash, but it's just what I got in my crate. I would prefer flat on that obviously as well. So that's the basic gist of it. You can end up getting crit rate on the slot two and crit damage on the slot six, uh, but early game, you won't get high enough crit rates to warrant it. So I definitely reckon for your attackers, just go for um, the attack and attack for those slots. For your support units, um, you'll be wanting to go for, basically this slot cannot have HP, so you wanna go for defense. This slot, uh, slot six cannot have defense, so you wanna go for HP. And then slot four can have defense or HP, so you can go for whichever one you want. So that, that's the basic gist of ruining, like very much in a nutshell, very simplified. Um, obviously your attackers would like a strike set because it increases attack and then you've got energy and ward for HP and defense on your support units. As you can see here, I've got my Stormblade, who is my main attacker in this account on the ward runes. That's because I got that crate of full four star ward runes. And just because they give the highest stats, he's my main unit that I'm using to clear the content. I just really wanted to get the best stats on him. And luckily one of them was an attack rune as well. So that's why he's got those ones. Um, otherwise, optimally, I would like a strike set, but like I said, until I get some four star or five star strike runes, that's where it's at. The final thing that I wanted to mention was guilds. Um, there isn't too much guild content out at the moment. They do, did say that guild raids are coming, um, but basically you wanna join a guild as soon as you can. You just get good rewards. You click this attendance button at the start of each day and you can just hit claim rewards and you get like energy, gold and stuff like that. The other fantastic thing about guilds is the request system. So you can request for shards of whatever Skylander you want. The amount of shards you get depend on the rarity of the unit. So as you can see here, one, shard, one stars get 10, uh, two stars you get six, three stars you get four, four stars you get two, and five stars you get one. So the more rare the unit is, the less shards you will get from requesting. But when you request those shards, 
it is actually your guild mates that are donating them to you and if you donate to other members you get more guild points and guild experience and stuff like that um, the only other thing in the guilds is missions you do get missions that you can work towards and claim rewards for as you go um, which are normally guild points and uh, gold as you can see there um, the guild shop still not too much uh, worthwhile in there there's a couple towers that you can buy the rewards aren't too great from them they are very expensive so there's nothing amazing at the moment in the guild shop um, value wise but that's pretty much it for the guild shop and that is pretty much it for this beginner's guide um, i was going to go into uh, sort of teams to build units to focus on early to get fast progression uh, the video is already over 20 minutes so i think i'm going to just skip that um end the video here and that'll be my next video that i make which will hopefully be up in the next couple days um, if i have time um, that'll be its own video just talking about yeah different units to optimize progression and I've got a few different theories on that and um, just through my experience of playing a few alt accounts and stuff like that. The only other thing I really wanted to mention is Discord. I've got a Discord server. There's a lot of awesome people on there. Um, really helpful community. So if you've got other questions that I've missed, um, let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer them there. But also if you go to the Discord, there's more likely to be someone there at the time you're on to help you out and answer your questions. Um, while you're down there, I'm also gonna put in the description anything useful that I can think of, any other videos I've made. Basically anything that I think will be of value to you guys will be in the description. And while you're down there, make sure you hit the thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video and it has helped you out. But um, besides that, hopefully I'll get that other video out soon. I'm also gonna try and get the reroll videos out um, by the time global launch happens so you guys can uh, know about re-rolls if that's what you want to do but yeah thanks for watching the video guys and i'll look forward to seeing you in the next one cheers